Hi guys, I'm Daddy Freeze, convener of the Free the Sheeple Movement and leader of the Free Nation in Christ. I greet you and I bring glad tidings. Someone said, why am I sweating? Because I've noticed that the AC or the fan filters into the sound and gives us a very bad sound quality. And the message is all about clarity. I need people to hear what I'm saying so I can, I can be... Um, when I'm coming to do my live and dangerous... Um, which I'll start at 10 o'clock. I can, I can take a dip in the sound because I'm connected directly by Skype to the radio station. So that's better. But for YouTube and um, Instagram, uh, AC or fan just blows at the mic and just makes it um, crazy. Official Easy Nice 19. You say I talk a lot of rubbish. Uh, but you like listening to rubbish, don't you? Because if you didn't like listening to rubbish, why would you be on my page? Shouldn't you be busy sweeping your father's compound and ironing his shirts and preparing him for work tomorrow? Because obviously you don't seem to have much to do. If NFA should have a mascot, it will most likely be you. As a matter of fact, if you type no future ambition on Google, your picture would show up and you'd be doing thumbs up like this. <laughs> what are you doing here if I'm talking rubbish? You could, you could be somewhere busying yourself. Eh? No wonder you come with fake handle and fake name. Let's see your real picture so we know who to troll. So we know where to send the thunder. <laughs> Hi guys, how are you doing to the rest of you that um, are children of conscience and sense? So um, <clears throat> today I want to talk about the demerits of unmerited favor in the covenant, in the new covenant. And I want us to start with a prayer. Heavenly Father, Almighty King, I come before you to glorify your name. And I ask for your wisdom and understanding to pour upon this generation. I ask, Father, for the ability to interpret the times and understand scriptures. I ask for the opening of our minds. And I ask that you provide for us, protect us, and lead us onto the path of life. In Yahushua's name, I pray. And the good people in the house all said, Amen. While the rest of them were thinking of what next to type to troll someone who cannot be trolled. So like I was saying, if you want to study the Niagara Falls, you go either from the Canada... Um, entrance or from the united states entrance if you want to study dinosaurs or or, or uh, travel to space and the moon you go to the usa and you go to nasa but for the demerits of unmerited favor you don't need to leave your bedroom you don't need to leave where you are just look at those in power and those behind pulpits in your country and you'd realize that that is the number one demerit of unmerited favor. When was the last time in Nigeria that we had a leader that genuinely deserved to lead us? I'm asking you, when was the last time that we had a leader that genuinely deserved to lead us. All oh, that unmerited favor. One brother somewhere, one church member somewhere, one chairman somewhere. Even our football team is quota. As far as I'm concerned, if I were a football fan, I would want a team that wins. So if you can gather a 21-man team of Kalaba people that will go and bring us the World Cup, I don't give a... I don't care. But because two, two people have to come from this state, two people have to come from this state, two people have to come, so it will be evenly distributed. We will now go there and play nonsense. 
Because those who genuinely merit half the time do not get the opportunity to be in power because those whose God has answered their unmerited favor prayers have been elevated to positions of power. I'll take this a little bit further. The higher you go in any food chain, the less people you have occupying positions. Let me give you an example. Nigeria, for instance, has only one president. Only one. Only one vice president. 31 governors? Or how many states do we have again? But how many plumbers do, does Nigeria have? One million. How many local government chairman does Nigeria have? Brrr, plenty. Now here's how it works. Someone can only be president for eight years at one time. You can't have two presidents. Only one president and for a maximum time of eight years. So if somebody whose prayer was answered, Father bless me with unmerited favor, and the one who merits to be there has been kicked out and the unmerited favor is there, a whole nation gets to suffer for eight years. Because it's not like we have a president and the one who is being promoted unduly is going to join him and the two of them will be president. No. For the unmerited favor guy, for his prayer to be answered, the one who is supposed to be there will not be there. I'll explain this with the food chain. You probably have 10 lions. Abby, under the lion, you now have 1,000 gazelle. And under the gazelle, you now have 10 million strands of grass. Gazelle eat grass. Lion eat gazelle. Food chain. Any gazelle that is aspiring to become a lion has to replace a lion because if you have more lions than a food chain or a food um a food chain can contain the lions will overeat the gazelle and then the gazelle will under eat the grass and then you have problems like uh what they had in yellowstone where they took out the wolves because they believed the wolves were eating the um the deer and the deer now over ate the vegetation until the point where even rivers started drying up go and read about the wolves of yellowstone so for you to be the danger the first danger of a merited favor is because you do not merit it the person who merits it gets not to get the seat So, you have the best student in your class, the one who's most able, the one who should get the position, and you have the average student in your class who's dating the lecturer. What now happens? Who gets to lead the class? The one with the unmerited favor. <clears throat> so when I see Nigerian pastors erroneously leading their children and their, uh, and their um, congregations into praying for unmerited favor, I begin to wonder, whatever it is that belongs to someone else that you take, you are leaving somebody hungry. You are leaving somebody who is deserving unemployed. Those are the demerits of unmerited favor. And I must tell you, the only unmerited favor you have as a Christian is the fact that Christ died for you 
and you do not deserve it. Every day you wake up, you have unmerited favor that you did not deserve. But that somebody's food will be given to you or somebody's position will be given to you or somebody who deserves to be somewhere will not be put there so you can be there is what you have in your leadership today. Tomorrow you'll now be protesting and be doing answers. Tomorrow you'll be protesting and doing uh, bad governance. God answered your prayers. And what you don't understand is, it's very, this, this uh, Old Testament, uh, I want to be like David, I want to be like Moses. For someone to be like David, somebody's got to die. For David to have Bathsheba, someone needed to die. So you've got to understand that if you take yourself, and I warn you about this old law. Let me tell you how dangerous the old law is. God was God of the Israelites only. He did not know any other tribe. That is why, if you sit down and wonder, what did the Philistines do, really? They said Goliath was threatening them. He was threatening them because they had a, a, a dispute. And if you have a dispute, soldiers of two sides will be threatening each other. It's normal. And they went to bring their Goliath. But you see, in the new covenant, God has become the God of David and Goliath. In the new covenant, God does not love David more than Goliath. God loves them equally. If not, you will probably be the Goliath and somebody else will be the David. So the moment you start praying that, ah, I, I get promoted, I get this, I get that, just know that I can be promoted to become a Goliath and somebody else be promoted to become David so that he can bring you down and then succeed. Because for every David, there is a Goliath. And you all cannot be Davids. That's the sad thing. You all cannot be Davids. Some of you are going to end up being Goliaths. Some of you are going to end up being Saul. Somebody said, on merit that comes from God doesn't rob any other person from their blessing. First of all, you can't write. Second of all, you can't think. Third of all, you should be in bed. It's way past your bedtime. Go and read about Solomon. Who was supposed to be king rightfully was Adonijah. Solomon became king. What happened to Adonijah? Go and read it. You think I went to the same school of theology or pastors that don't know book went to? Go and read what happened to Adonijah. You feel God's blessings are sufficient. Now, all these promotions, they are not blessings from... You have to understand that in the new covenant, God does not bless people with political power and money and all those things. You guys need to understand what Christianity is. If that was how God was blessing people with money, Apostle Paul would have been a billionaire. So you all need to understand these things and stop letting people lead you astray. Your prayer should be whoever deserves to hold a political or religious office should be the one who's elected. That should be your prayer. Think about it. Each time someone is saying, when the blessing comes from God, nobody will be removed. That's a lie. That is a lie. When God wanted to punish the Israelites, he used Nebuchadnezzar. But at the end of the day, he still brought out Nebuchadnezzar. So if you follow the balance of the old covenant, you would realize that that old covenant did not favor anyone. But in the new covenant, we're now equal. All of a sudden, he's the God of David and the God of Goliath. 
He's the God of the Jews and the Gentiles, the God of Israel, Samaria, and Palestine. He's no longer the God of Israel. He is now the God of the whole world. That is why the scriptures say, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. Not because God loved Israel, not because God loved Christians, because he loved the world. And you need to understand that for God to love the world, things must be balanced. And also, if we go further into scripture, there are many lies that they tell you. Eh, Joseph was not deserving. Joseph was elevated from a prisoner. Dude, Joseph was the only one in the whole Egypt that could interpret Pharaoh's dream. He wasn't elevated. His talent was requested. His gift was needed. You guys don't understand this. And I worry for you. Joseph could interpret his father's dreams. He got to prison. He interpreted people's dreams. How do you think they went to bring him from prison? Someone that interpreted someone's dream. The dream came to pass and the person forgot him in prison until there was a need for him. Why didn't he go and bring Jacob? Why was it Joseph they went to bring from prison? Because Joseph had delivered in the past. So that eh, Joseph was elevated from prisoner, you will be elevated from prisoner. One day, if you are in prison for a crime, you will be in that prison unless you can change for the better and then you can get an elevation. Because it is dangerous to take a prisoner and make him prime minister. When Joseph came before Pharaoh, he interpreted his dream and he gave him financial and political advice for the next 14 years that ensured that Pharaoh became the richest man in the world. Pharaoh saw that he could deliver. You are just wasting your time, wasting your life, like that guy coming to comment and asking me about my sweat. Just wasting your life and expecting God to take you from there and take you where? Where you can become even more useless? So don't let anybody fool you and tell you, eh, eh, Joseph was not... There was nobody in the world that merited Joseph's position because nobody in the world could interpret Pharaoh's dreams. There was a special gift. So if your prayer is, Father, that gift in me, let it be called upon so I can showcase your gifts in me is a different prayer. But if you come at it and you are low, 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 and you are going to be there, Prime Minister, you are wasting your time. This one is saying, oh God, Joseph was innocently accused, so God was on his side. Was well, Joseph the only innocently accused person in the whole of Egypt? Bros, can you be thinking, even if it's once in a week, just think for two minutes. I know it will give you headache, but just try and think for two minutes every week. You will not be where you are today. Joseph was innocently accused, so God was on his side. Go to Kirikiri, as if he would have been innocently accused for 10 years. Is God not on their side? How do you process thought in such a way that you start to think backwards like you are devolving? Please, if you don't have what to say, just keep quiet. I'm the one preaching the sermon. When I'm done, preach your own. Open your own life and preach your own sermon. Let's also talk about another very silly one that pastors use. They say Moses was a stammerer. I've searched for the scriptures that say Moses was a stammerer and I've not found. Uh, but if you read Exodus chapter 4 verse 10, it says, But Moses pleaded with the Lord, O oh Lord, I'm not very good with words. I never have been and I'm not now, even though you have spoken to me. 
I get tongue-tied and my words get tangled. That doesn't show that he was a stammerer. But okay, you people say he's a stammerer. All right, let's see it. Now, they will tell you that Moses was a stammerer while Aaron was eloquent. Meanwhile, God chose Moses. Do you know why God chose Moses? Let me give you a scripture why. Go with me to the book of Acts chapter 7 verse 22. I'm reading from the New International Version. Moses was educated in all the wisdom of the Egyptians and was powerful in speech and action. Moses was educated in all of the wisdom of Egypt. Just remember that Egypt was the world's first civilization. Moses and Pharaoh's son, uh, the Europeans tried to make us believe that it was Pharaoh Ramsey, but that's with, with history has proven that that's false. But whatever Pharaoh it was, his son and Moses went to the same school. Moses was raised as an Egyptian prince, while Aaron was raised as an Israeli slave. So talk all Aaron wanted to talk, he could not match Moses in knowledge, in skill, in understanding. So Moses, so God choosing Moses is, is not by accident. Moses was the best person in Israel, in all of Israel, to lead the Israelites out of Egypt. He was the only one that could go and face Pharaoh. Could they stand before Pharaoh? So when they come and tell you Moses was a stammerer, Moses was a stammerer, Moses was this, There was no human being in Israel that was better qualified than Moses. If there was, it wasn't Aaron or Miriam. So God chose Moses. And God also knew why he was choosing Moses. And it wasn't just even because of his education. It was also because of Moses' meek spirit. And that is why when Aaron and Miriam went against Moses, God struck Miriam with leprosy. So you've got to understand that too. They try to dribble you into not understanding that. Let's talk a little bit about David. David, who was just a shepherd... David was just a shepherd and God took him from where he was a shepherd and made him king. Can we please go to the book of 1 Samuel chapter 16 verse 18? I think we should actually read from about 1 Samuel 16, um, 16 thereabouts. 14, 1 Samuel 16, 14. Now the spirit of the Lord had left Saul, and the Lord sent a tormenting spirit that filled him with depression and fear. Some of Saul's servants said to him, A tormenting spirit from God is troubling you. Let us find a good musician to play the harp whenever the tormenting spirit troubles you. He will play soothing music and soon you will be well. All right, Saul said, find me someone who plays well and bring him here. One of the servants said to Saul, one of Jesse's sons from Bethlehem is a talented harp player. Not only that, he is a brave warrior, a man of war and has good judgment. He is also fine looking, a, finely, a fine looking young man and the Lord was with him. So Saul sent messengers to Jesse to say, send me your son David, the shepherd. David was the best 
player of the harp in all of Israel. Listen to what, was, what they said about him. He's a brave warrior. A man of war that has good judgment. You think they just went to bring a shepherd boy that was somewhere playing trant? And when they went to war and were returning from war, remember what the women sang? David kills his ten thousands while Saul kills his thousands. And you want to tell me that David was not qualified? So yes, of course, there's that boost from God, but all these people that are boosted are qualified people. Your geos are telling you that you can come from the gutter and become and become the prime minister. Oh yes, you can. But you know what happens next? Nigeria. So you need to wake up from these illusions and delusions. You need to start praying. It will be, listen, yeah, the beauty of Christianity is, Christianity is not Jacob and Esau. In Christianity, Jacob and Esau could never have happened. Esau will go and steal Jacob's blessing. I'm mean, sorry, Jacob will go and steal Esau's blessing. As a Christian, it's impossible. It was possible under the old law. When God would decide who to favor. The, the scriptures are very clear. They said God liked Esau, I mean David, from the womb. I, I say they, uh, Jacob from the womb. What does a child in the womb, what could he have done in the womb? But that no longer operates and it's dangerous because you could be Esau. Let me just help you by removing you from this feed. Since you don't want to learn. I don't know if I'm making sense to you. In the new covenant, a Christian, the new covenant is love your neighbor as yourself. If you love your neighbor as yourself, you will not steal your neighbor's blessings. Your geos need to get their noses out of that old covenant because they are selling you expired drugs and expired milk. And it is making you all spiritually sick. That Jacob took Esau's blessing is the least Christian thing anybody can tell you. In our covenant, it's dangerous to take somebody else's blessings. And at the end of the day, ask yourself, what did Jacob do with the blessing? He was in the tent when Pharaoh that worshipped Ra, the sun god, was receiving revelation from God. He was there looking and going hungry. Eventually, his children ended up slaves in Israel. I mean in Egypt. So you need to wake up. Let them not give you doctrines that will purge you. I'll take this a little bit further. The Christian thing to do is love your neighbor as yourself. If, you, if Jacob loved Esau as himself, you think he would take his blessing? It was okay under their covenant. Under ours, <laughs> he would not make heaven. And I'll show you why. First Corinthians chapter six, verse 10. I think I should read from verse nine. Don't you realize that those who do wrong will not inherit the kingdom of God? Don't fool yourselves. Those who indulge in sexual sins or who worship idols or commit adultery or who are male prostitutes or practice homosexuality 
or are thieves or greedy people or drunkards or abusive or cheat people, none of these will inherit the kingdom of God. So if Jacob and his mother got away with it in the old covenant, if you try it, you are digging a hole that will end you in hell. I call it the hole to hell. So it is extremely dangerous to put yourself under an old covenant that has elements of greed and wickedness. And you have pastors that substitute greed for need. And that is why we are where we are. So here is my message to you all this very wonderful and beautiful Tuesday evening. Stop praying for unmerited favor. Instead, ask God to qualify you. And God is not going to qualify lazy people. David was not lazy. Joseph was not lazy. Moses was not lazy. He is going to qualify you when he sees that you have the ability and the endurance to run the race. Let me tell you, some people are so useless that even... Illuminati will reject them because there's nothing they can do. They are useless. So when you are useless, you are useless to yourself and to the world. You are even useless to the devil. So if the devil cannot use you, why do you think God can? When you have not put anything in yourself, all you do from morning to night is jump from one person's life to the other, insulting them, insulting celebs, and then you ask for giveaway. Even the devil cannot employ you to do anything. If they, there are some people that will be calling devil, they will be running. There are some people that will dial devil's number, they will see them, they will be blocking their call. If you check the devil's phone, as in you carry Satan's iPhone, go to block list, some of your names are there. As in now you they call devil, devil they run from Una because nothing we want to do. What is your gift? How are you developing this gift? All you do from morning to night is pray, die by fire, prayer, pray, 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 but you have no gift. What does God want to use you to do? To pray? So think about this. I'll give you a story. When I was um, growing up, there was somebody in my radio station in BCOS who wanted to do what they call Sheshu. Who understands what Sheshu is? Shesho is like doing jazz to make money. And the person went to see Babalao and came back and gave us the gist. And said, they said he'll get a skull and he'll get a chameleon that the chameleon doesn't, the chameleon wears other people's clothes, blah, 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 blah. And then the skull is representing the human being. And the child told us, I've forgotten how the whole story went. And then he said, the Babalao said something for this money ritual. He said that the moment they start the Etutu, the moment they start doing the ritual, that he must go and open a business. That if it is food he's selling, everybody will just be coming to buy his own food for no reason. And when he went, something ministered to me. Even the devil cannot bless an idle hand. You must go and start a business. If it's pure water you are selling, if it's water you are selling, if it's car you are washing, you must have something the devil can come and multiply. The devil cannot multiply zero. You don't understand. If you take zero, if you take one and multiply it by one million, you have one million. Now, if you had 10 and they multiply it by one million, it becomes 10 million. If you had 100, and they multiply it by 1 million, it becomes 100 million. If you had 1,000 in your hand and they multiply it by 1 million, it becomes 1 billion. But if you have zero and they multiply it by 1 trillion, it becomes zero. You cannot multiply zero by anything. So as long as you are zero, not God, not the devil can use you.
Now, if you have someone who already has a business before, he's, he knows how to sell business but doesn't have luck and now goes to meet the devil and says, okay, I want to do this thing. I want to bring Skull. I want to bring uh, Chameleon. There's already something on ground. So when the devil wants to come and bless him, the devil has what to bless. But you that sit down from morning to night by the beach, smoking, drinking, chasing women, going on people's IG live and talking nonsense, what does God, what can God multiply with your zero? That's what, God will even turn to one. Nothing in this world can be multiplied by you. You are not a factor for multiplication. You can't multiply. You are not fruitful, so you can't multiply. So these are the things we need to understand. So first of all, get a talent. If you are an academic, for instance, and you're a professor, there's something God can multiply. You are a doctor, there's something God can multiply. You are a Liko Dangote. If God wants to multiply a Liko Dangote, we just turn to Mark Zuckerberg whim. But sit down and ask yourself, what is in me that God can multiply? If you cannot find it, neither can God and neither can the devil. All these people, all of them that you're talking about, all the prophets in Christianity and Islam, they all had something. They were, the scriptures say, Isaac sowed in that land. And in that year, he reaped a hundredfold. He sowed, he planted, he worked. Isaac did not sit down and put his leg up and watch a telenovela from morning to night, and then God come, came to bless him a hundredfold. God cannot bless what is not existent a hundredfold. It will be zero. So many of you are zeroids. You are empty. And you are the ones leading the prayer for unmerited favor. May God not answer it on behalf of people like us that have something inside us. Develop yourself. So people say, eh, mm, you can be a little dangote. Eh, if, let me tell you, if they gave you a little dangote's money, in 10 years you'll be broke. In fact, you'll be poor. In fact, you'll be begging. Because if you don't have the business acumen that man has, or my Kadenuga has, any money they give you, you will be turning it to zero because you are a zeroid. So as the money they hit you, boy, I go zero and quick, I go zero. Everything else they hit you, zero. And then you end up in a place of political power and you will do zero. Because you are not fruitful, you cannot be multiplied. So nothing, you can't, zero cannot be. Let me tell you, God himself cannot multiply zero. It's impossible. Whatever is multiplied by zero ends up being zero. It's a principle of the world that even God cannot change. So wake up. You cannot continue being zero and then expect to come and lead us tomorrow. I reject it. If you want to be zero, zero on your own. Thank you and God bless the rest of you. I'll soon be back again in 10 minutes. I'll go and wipe my face. Don't worry, then I'll put the fan on me so um, you don't need to hear my voice so distinctly. distinctly. Please stop being zeroids. God cannot multiply zero. Bye. I love you. Take care of yourselves and God bless you.